What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Carried Away Travels. If this is your first time here, I'm Carrie, and I share helpful travel tips, gear recommendations, itineraries, and more so that you can always have the perfect trip. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm actually based out of the Hampton Roads area of Virginia. That's right on the East Coast by the water, and we're one of, if not the most visited part of the state because of our great beach scene. So every spring and summer, we have tons of tourists coming down here looking for fun things to do. And thankfully, the Hampton Roads area keeps up with that demand because it seems like there's always something new and exciting popping up for us to check out. Like I just found out the other day that we have a restaurant where your food gets served by a robot arm and comes down on a little conveyor belt. It's all you can eat. Guarantee I will be checking that out very soon. So definitely stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, I think you guys are really going to enjoy the focus of this week's video, right? It's fun, it's bizarre, it has a full room of butts floating in space for reasons I don't understand. All right, it's the Lost Planet Selfie Museum. So I've actually been wanting to try a selfie museum for a couple of years now. I've been seeing them pop up in these metropolitan areas all over the United States, and they always just look like so much fun. And if you've never been to a selfie museum, if you've never heard of a selfie museum, it's basically a creative space where you can take your date, your family, some friends, and they have little environments set up where you can pose and take fun photos. They may be just really out of this world. They may be beautiful. They may just be kind of silly, but it gives you a chance to just kind of pose and be creative and just goof off for a little bit while you're capturing the whole thing on your phone. But what makes the Lost Planet a little bit extra is it's not just a selfie museum, but it's also an immersive experience, which I'll get into more later in this video. But if you haven't heard me talk about immersive experiences on here before, I love them. I will seek out immersive experiences because I think they're just so much fun. I love walking into a building and feeling like I've been transported somewhere completely different. I like finding all the hidden little puzzles or visual things that they often hide in those immersive experiences and just really feeling like I can get lost and wander around. They're so much fun. So I really like that the Lost Planet combined the selfie museum with some more immersive exhibits. I thought it just added so much to the experience. Now, Daniel and I actually went to check out the Lost Planet for our fifth anniversary. Yes, this was my anniversary day and it was super fun. We had a great time. It was really nice because we went during the off season in February and so we had the place almost entirely to ourselves. So if you're watching this as a Hampton Roads resident, I would really recommend that you check out the Lost Planet before or between the busy tour seasons. You know how it gets here. Once summer hits, everyone's going to be on the boardwalk checking this kind of thing out. But if you go in the off season, they are open on weekend afternoons and you can just take your sweet time, not have to worry about people pushing you through. And it just gives you more freedom to kind of goof off and enjoy the experience. Now that is definitely not to say that if you're coming here as a tourist, don't check this out because it's gonna be busy. I still highly recommend it, but I would say you might wanna check this out maybe in the morning before it gets warm enough that you wanna hit the beach or something like that because things tend to fill up later in the day as people wake up and the boardwalk is especially busy at night. So if you're coming during the spring or summer and you don't wanna be fighting all the other tourists, be sure to plan accordingly. So first things first, the Lost Planet is located right on the Virginia Beach boardwalk. If you're walking around looking for it, you should be able to find it pretty easily because of the giant gorilla head bursting out of the side of the building. But if you are on the, that side of the boardwalk, you can also look out for the Zoltar fortune telling machine that they have right in the entrance as well. Tickets for this are $16 for anyone 10 and up, ages four and up are $12 and kids three and under are free. If you want to do the mirror maze as well, which I'll get into at the end, that's just $12 per person. That's also a lot of fun. All right, so your Lost Planet journey starts by following a worker up a set of stairs and down this long portal-like tunnel. Now this is kind of supposed to be like you're being transported to the Lost Planet. It's got all these flashing lights, music, mirrors, greenery, 
And if you want to stop and take some pictures in there, that's fine. The worker will just wait for you down at the other end in the first room. Now, The Lost Planet has over 20 different environments that you can take photos in, but this first room is the main portion of the selfie museum. So it's smaller and instead of these really immersive environments, which you'll get into later, it's a lot more little booths where you can pose and just take quick, funny shots. The worker is also there to help you take any pictures of your group that you want. So you're free to take selfies, you can take pictures of each other, but if you want pictures of your whole group, the worker is there to take pictures for you guys and also explain how some of the optical illusion ones work. There are a number of them that are set up to look like you're being captured by a giant monkey or a dragon is blowing fire on you, different things like that. And so the worker will guide you through that experience. The girl with us was so patient. She let us take all the pics that we want in these different little environments. And then you move into the second portion of the selfie museum which is like this retro diner. And there's a few different things in here that you can take photo ops with, but the main focus here is definitely the retro diner booth that looks like it's being taken by a giant gorilla. Yes, there is a gorilla theme through this first part, but that was a lot of fun. The worker was happy to take a bunch of pictures of us pretending to be scared for our lives. And there's a lot of just little different things you can discover in this room. But the other main attraction here is this giant toothbrush that when you walk around it makes flatulent noises and apparently the more times you walk past it the louder and grosser it gets so we just did a couple and that was enough for us but if you have kids they may enjoy that too much um so once you're done in here the worker is going to say goodbye and you have to find the secret door to get into the rest of the museum. So somewhere in this room, there is a secret door that allows you to access the rest of the exhibits. And from that point, you have one hour to enjoy the rest of the museum. Now, I had a lot of fun just taking our silly little selfies, but the immersive exhibits really were my favorite parts. The first room was like this kind of black lit wonderland type of thing with lots of mirrors, a foam pit, creepy trees, and a two-player Street Fighter game. So there was a lot of just little fun details that you could discover in here. We had it all to ourselves. So we hopped in the foam pit. It wasn't very deep, but we threw foam chunks at each other and had a great time. We took selfies in the mirror. We played the video game. It was really fun. And then when we'd finished up in there, we walked down this hallway past some cool neon paintings. And the next room was like lasers. So they were ropes and they were lit up, but I really liked that every time you touched a rope, it did actually make like a zapping noise. Um, I had a lot of zaps, did not do well, would not make a good spy. But it was fun just to kind of go through that room. And I thought that was an interesting way to transition from one environment to the next. The next environment is the heart room. And this has a giant anatomically correct heart statue in the middle of the room. It's lined with mirrors. They have all these cool lights. There's music playing. Again, we had it all to ourselves. So we just had a little dance party and goofed off. And then when we were done with that, you can actually climb inside the heart. It's hollow and they have sticky notes and pens so you can leave a note saying we were here but the interior of this heart is completely covered with sticky notes from people who've visited before it was just a neat little touch so after this you go through another cool hallway and they call this the moon room it once again feels kind of like you're in a portal going to a different dimension it has these really cool strobing lights that change colors as you go down the tunnel it was very short, but a very interesting transition. And then of course, last but not least is the space booty room. I'll be honest, I was not prepared for this room at all. I actually caught it on audio. No! Yeah, so I don't know who picked the theme for this room, but it is a theme and it is there. 
So it is literally just a room covered in like a space pattern paint and they just slap these booties on the wall all over. So it is quite the experience. It's got a couple little fun things you can do in there. They have some of those spun chairs. They're those circular chairs that kind of look like a big spool of thread and you can spin all around in them which kind of feels like anti-gravity. So we had fun twirling around on those for a little bit. So the other main attraction in this room is the booty cannon. <laughs> and they have a big set of booty cheeks on this pedestal. And the instructions literally say, smack them podium cheeks, bruh. <laughs> and, and so, when you smack the booty, there's a stage on one side of the room and it's got a hole and money shoots out of it. So you put one of your friends up on the stage with the pole. And so Daniel was kind enough to do this for us because I have zero skills here. Uh, so you send your friend to go spin around the pole and you smack the podium and the cannon shoots money at them. And we did that a couple more times than we probably should have, but it was fantastic. So once you're done in the space butt room, the last thing here is just a hallway kind of guiding you to the exit. There's some neon signs, there's a little bench, and you're going to come out at the back of the building on the second story. So if you're done, you can just leave. But if you are interested in the mirror maze, you can come down and go around back to the front of the building and go into the mirror maze. I thought this was really fun. I am glad we did both. The maze is not huge, but it's pretty extensive. It's got a bunch of flashing lights. There's music. There's a lot of little hidden nooks and crannies with statues or little surprises. So you can spend a little while wandering around there, discovering all the little surprises. They do give you plastic gloves so that you can touch the mirrors without smudging. And if you do the Lost Planet and the Mirror Maze, they'll even give you these glasses that I guess mess with your vision even further. So the Mirror Maze gets even harder. So we got those. And since it was a slow day, the staff actually did some races with us. So they started Daniel and I at different ends and then let us go to see who could go through the fastest. Um, Daniel was weirdly good at this. He absolutely smoked me like three times in a row, which was not fair. I'm not saying he cheated, but no, he didn't cheat. I just apparently really stunk at it, but that was a lot of fun. I thought it was nice that they added an extra fun element and we were free to wander around in there as long as we wanted, but I think we did about five different times before we called it a day. So that is the Lost Planet Selfie Museum in Virginia Beach. Daniel and I had such a fun time. Again, we went for our anniversary, which we like doing just silly things together, but we had an absolute blast. We took some fun pictures and videos. We got to laugh at and with each other. I would not mind going back and doing this with some friends because I feel like if you had even more people, it would just be even more bizarre. But we had a great time just as a date. I could see this as a great family activity if you're looking for something to do as well. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps things up for me for today. Thank you so much for stopping by to watch this video. I really appreciate your support and I hope that this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop those in the comment section below. I love to hear from you guys. And if you're interested in reading more about this, I do have a written blog post on my website. That's CochraneWriting.com and you'll find it under the Carried Away Travels blog. Before you go, if you could do me a favor, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It means so much to me. It goes a long way. And don't forget to subscribe to Carried Away Travels as well so you get notified about more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for being here and happy travels.